teenage problems? Well, let's fix that. Dr. Darlene here, whatstopsyou.com. I'm excited that we're crossing paths today. My goal is to share skills and tools with you that'll quickly turn your family around. And I'm telling you, I promise you, if you listen, if you understand, it might take a moment, you'll get it and things will change without me talking to your child. I can do that too, but let me talk to you first. Let's switch things around so that you can have the family you've always wanted. I know when I was young, I dreamed about what it would be like to have a family and this white picket fence and everything great and they grow up to be wonderful children. Well, did that happen? You're right in the midst of it. Now, if I were you, I'd want to know about me and why I can help you. Couple things, of course, my academic journey in adolescent development. I've worked in secure facilities. I know what naughty teens are. In addition, I have five children and their ages now from 26 to 41. When I was raising my children, I had four stepkids as well. When you add five and four, what do you get? Oh, a number that's unconscionable. <laughs> it's nine, nine kids. We had a five-year-old and eight of them were teenagers. Hmm, what do we do now? My kids are all grown now. All of them have children except two, and, and all are married, well, except the two. And they have produced wonderful little teeny humans that you could eat, and they're yummy, and there's 13 of them running around. We had nine here at Christmas. So I'm not sure you have much that you've gone through that I haven't gone through myself with my kids or certainly seen with my clients or the work that I've done. So let's get going. I've got copious notes here really quickly to share the basics of what you need to know before we then really get to work. But if you don't understand these basics, you can't really get to work. Let me tell you what I hear all the time from parents. Why is my teenager so angry? Why is my teenage son so angry? My daughter. Why is my teenage daughter defiant? On and on. My child is defiant. My child sleeps all day. My child plays internet games all day. And they're addicted to their internet. I hear that all day. And I get it. It's awful. And as a parent, well, feeling like a failure is the worst thing that can happen. Feeling like a bad parent I'd rather break my leg. Today we're going to go over three areas. As I said quickly, so get your pen out. What is authority? When your kids don't want to hang out with authority, what is authority? We'll talk about how much authority you have when they're 1, 3, 5, 16, 18, 20, and 35. Is your authority the same or does it change? Ha! Huh. So three areas. We're going to talk about understanding teenagers, understanding parenting. That's number one, actually. Then number two is we're going to talk about normal versus abnormal behavior. What's normal? What's abnormal? The third thing is what's high risk behavior and what's low risk behavior because they're not the same. And most of you watching this are not clear of the distinction. I'm crystal clear of the distinction. So let's get going. So by the end of this video, which is not very long, you will be able to diagnose whether your kid is normal, abnormal, high risk or low risk. And then I'll give you some ideas of what you're gonna do about it. Yeah, sound good? Okay, let's get ready. Let's get going. Well, let me tell you, my favorite ever metaphor is you are making bread and you roll it and you do it and you put the yeast in and you do all your thing and you put it in the oven. What do you do then? Well, after the bed's in the oven for five minutes, usually the average person, the normal person, would go want to look at it and maybe open the door. And after 10 minutes, you open the door and go, oh my gosh, it's not working very well. My bread's all lumpy on this side and it's down low on that side. I don't think my bread's going to turn out very well. Pretty soon you look again. Oh, it's all puffy. It's good, good. Oh, wait. Then you shut the oven, maybe slam the oven. 
and then you look and go, my bread is in the middle. And you know what? When you take this bread out, it doesn't look very good. So you know what to do with bread. You do the same things with bread that you do with children. And that is, now hear me out, not yet, and I have to show you how. You get out of their way. Yeah, hold on. A parent's job is to give their children only two things. Give them roots and give them wings. Roots is stability. It might be uh, spirituality, security of love, a home, food is there. Roots to grow, a place to cry and laugh when you come home, a room to have that you can express yourself with posters, friends to call. So you've got roots here. Wings means learning to fly. Do you want your child to grow up to be a robot? Or do you want it to know how to fly? To me, flying means the child has the ability to think on their own. So when they leave the nest, they can think on their own and make decisions instead of mom, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Some parents like that, and we'll talk about that too, about uh, how to not be so connected to your kids in a really super great way. But for today, understand that your parenting is going to shift and change as they grow. And those kids, I'm going to tell you right now, if when my kids were all born, within a year or three, if I died and left and never came back, my kids would still grow up. And I'm going to say, as cool as I am, as great of a parent as I am, I think they'd be similar to what they are now. Not completely, but they would still have that innate drive and thing that they do. Are they a singer, songwriter, or are they kind of a hippie, permaculture, gardening person? I have both. I have five kids that are opposite from each other. Opposite, opposite, opposite. How do you get opposites with five? But they have two things in common. They have roots. Oh, I'm going to cry. They know I'm here. And their dad has passed away. And that gives me a lot of responsibility. Because I feel like I overcompensate. I get it. My kids have roots. But they also have wings. I love. That my, I get emotional. This is emotional because it's important. I have five kids that think for themselves. And my last sentence when I hang up the phone almost every time is, you'll figure it out because they do. Let's talk about what's normal versus abnormal behavior. Is your kid normal? This is normal. Ready? Lazy. Ha <laughs> ha Sleeps all day if they can get away with it. Play games as much as possible on their computer. Don't take responsibility for their actions. Not at all helpful around the house. Want to be friends more than, want to be with friends more than family. They don't reason well. They debate with their parents. They're defiant. I have that written right there. And usually angry. <laughs> Sorry, this is just reporting. You don't shoot the messenger, but that's a normal teenager. So, so far, is your kid normal? Well, well, well. Let's talk about what abnormal is. This is not common. Helpful. Team player. Wants to go to school and get themselves up. Wants to go to church consistently helps around the house, cleans up after themselves, says, Mom, how can I help you? Comma, Mom, Dad, thank you for what you do for me. <laughs> right? Is your kid abnormal? Well, what we're going to do with the skills and tools here, and of course more than just this video, is we're going to help you have the most abnormal, cool, awesome child ever. I know, right? Kind of interesting. Let's talk about low risk, 
versus high risk. Low risk means they do it once or twice. Maybe there's not a pattern. They just, they just smoked once. I know it's awful, but you know what? That's still low risk, meaning you just watch. With low risk, you watch. High risk, you grab them and you take them home or you lock them in their room. That's high risk. So back to low risk. Being rude to authority is low risk. I know. The principal calls you. If he just does it once, hang out. Disobedient, mildly, mildly defiant, running away once or twice, hanging around the wrong crowd for a while, that's normal and it's low risk. I know. Lying and deceiving on small things on occasion, that's low risk and kind of normal, but you want to watch it. Low self-esteem, got to watch it, but it's still low risk. Anger, kind of, stealing once, outbursts, blame, toying with the idea of drugs, trying them once, pushing the envelope with mild sexual behaviors, talking about it, talking rude, masturbation, not wanting to be with family, saying that mom and dad never did anything for them. So based on your upbringing, there's a huge variable, and that's why this will follow up with other conversations. You have your beliefs about what's right or wrong according to religion and how you were raised. I'm telling you, in America, this is across the country I have clients, this is still low risk. No matter what your religious beliefs, that would be a variable, and how you were raised is a definite variable. Because if you were raised strict, you might think, oh, I can't let my kid do that, I never did it. Or you might overcompensate the other way where your parents were permissive, so you grab on harder. Take a breath. All right, there's a difference between use versus abuse versus addiction. Write that down. Use, abuse, addiction. That's the distinction between low and high risk. There's also, with different naughtiness, a stage, a phase, and a pattern. Patterns usually don't show up till after they're 18 or out of the house. I know. This is a lot of information really fast. Might want to listen to this again. High risk behavior. This is where you want to grab your kid. It requires immediate forced action. Severe eating disorders. Impatient. Uh, eating disorders as defined. So you might want to get a really sure diagnosis on that. Drug abuse or drug dealing. No. I didn't say use once, I said abuse. Real bad abuse and addiction. Activities that include anything illegal, immoral, or unethical that have become a phase into a pattern. When it's way more than one time episode, statutory rape, those kinds of things. So, right? Lots to think about here. Where's the diagnosis of your child? Right now, we're just diagnosing. Whew, take a breath. We're almost done. Let's now diagnose a normal parent and an abnormal parent. A normal parent is codependent, hovering, controlling. A showbiz parent where your success is equal to my success, is, so you need to be successful so I look good. Very common. Not trusting your teenager, not at all. Parents that think they're all that and they're all so smart and they know everything. Parents that have low self-esteem, this is a normal parent. Um, yeah, so normal parenting is just this overreaction, over-parenting, over-concern, and not letting the bread rise because there's not trust and faith in the process. Abnormal parent. High self-esteem, realizing that they're not their children. I am not my child. I remember learning that, I'll tell you another day. But it was really weird, really weird for me to realize my son wasn't me, or part of me. How could he do that or this? Uh, kids, uh, let's see, 
an abnormal parent knows their kids have their own mind, their own personality, and they understand their kids can barely be shaped, but only a little bit shaped. And a really great parent understands the journey of life and God's plan. That's what an abnormal parent is. So what's our goal with these teen issues? These troubled teens, these defiant humans that live in our house, just right down the hall. What do we do? First question to answer at this point, do you want your child to be a robot? And just mind you and do what you say and do everything right and grow up just like you thought? Or do you want your child to have wings? So you need to get a life, and I say that with all due respect, as you watch the bread grow. Trust me, we have a lot more to talk about at another time. Boundaries, how to say the boundaries. Uh, verbiage, how to say things and how so not to say things. Parenting styles, there's many, three main ones and many, many, many more. We need to talk about identity development. We talk, need to talk about family structure and order. We need to talk about presupposing language, rapport, etc. And our goal is to help you have abnormal children. Yes, and you be an abnormal parent and live a beautiful life and have a beautifully abnormal family with respect and love flowing through life knowing we're all on our own journey and have the life that you want and have the family you always dreamed about. It's possible. Thank you for listening. If what I have said has helped you, go ahead and tap the like button and please make comments, questions or concerns and let me know how I can help you further. Watch for Dr. Darlene and whatstopsyou.com. Have a great day. Take care. Talk soon.